Speaker, good evening. I rise again in this House to speak to you, Mr. Speaker, about C-45, the Cannabis Act. One would think once would be enough for a member to stand up in this House and speak about it, but it is not. Bill C-45 is flawed, and I'm appalled that the Minister of Justice would present such an ill-prepared bill and arbitrarily force it on Canadians. Last night, I sat in on a debate on Bill C-46, Mr. Speaker, regarding impaired driving. Well, Mr. Speaker, if people are going to get high over C-45, I can only say they ain't going to happen with Bill C-46. One tends to get depressed as you dwell into it. Mr. Speaker, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and I are both former police officers. With similar years of service, he an urban city police officer, myself a rural RCMP officer. My honourable colleague must be having difficulty over his party's two acts, and I really feel for him. Mr. Speaker, making marijuana legal in Canada is wrong. Simply wrong. And they don't understand that across. The 2016 report on legalization of marijuana in Colorado should have stopped the Liberals in their tracks, but it didn't. And here are some simple facts. We heard a few earlier. Traffic deaths have increased 62% since 2013. Use of marijuana by use, and that was people using marijuana, by the way, Mr. Speaker. Use of marijuana by use increased 20%, yet the American national average declined 4%. Did you know, Mr. Speaker, that in Colorado, youth are marked number one in the use of marijuana over all of the United States? And if you go back to 205 and 206, they were ranked 14th. The education really worked well, Mr. Speaker. But let's not blame the youth. Adults use it up to 17% in Colorado since they brought the legal leg legislation out. And it's only come up 2% nationally. And also, adults in Colorado are the number one users in the United States. When if you go back to the same years as I mentioned with the younger people, 2005, 2006, Mr. Speaker, they were only number eight. Mr. Speaker, these numbers scare me. They are high. Heck, did you know that Colorado's adults' use increased 63% in the first two years they legalized marijuana? That was 42% above the rest of USA. Mr. Speaker, I wonder what was causing their numbers to get higher. Oh yes, maybe marijuana. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Did you know the state of Washington has very similar statistics since they've legalized marijuana? I've said it before, and I'll repeat it again. I spent 35 years watching the growth of marijuana use in Western Canada from its infancy to, to what we see today, Mr. Speaker. So maybe a story or two may help convince our Liberal friends across the way. And I'll start with one. We all know about secondhand smoke. It's not good. So I'm just going to give you a scenario, Mr. Speaker. A group of 18-year-olds, they went out for a night to some community 100 miles or so from their town. Billy is the driver. He's the designated driver. Because Billy doesn't drink, and he doesn't use marijuana, and he doesn't use drugs. But his car mates, and you might recognize some of these names, and I'm just using them just for, for certain purposes. His, his car mates are Ralph, Jody, Jane, and Justine. Justine? In fact, they all 
celebrated for the night, and they all smoked up a portion of each of their individual 30 grams of marijuana. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker? You know what? They continued to do that as Billy drove them home. A two-hour drive back to their community. But you know what happened, Mr. Speaker? 15 minutes from home, Billy loses control, overcorrects on a sharp corner, the vehicle rolls, rolls, rolls. Billy didn't notice the speed was at 150 kilometers. None of the five make it home that night alive. Now, most people would think maybe Billy was being an innocent person, but the smoke probably made him disorientated. We haven't looked at that. They haven't talked about that. Sorry, Mr. Speaker, to be so cynical and depressing, but that is the reality that this legislation will create in this great country of ours. Now, Mr. Speaker, I've heard people talking about, oh, it's going to protect our children. Mm -hmm. We're going to do organized crime. Well, Mr. Speaker, if I was a drug dealer, I would have all of my street people under the age of 17, and I'd make sure they never carry more than five grams on their persons. It'd be a pretty safe way of doing business. That's the shocking part of it, Mr. Speaker. They haven't thought about that. Now, Mr. Speaker, another little story I was just reading while I was waiting to uh, speak here deals with an accident that happened in uh, Colorado. Hmm. Seems strange why it happened there. But a young guy, a 20-year-old man, was uh, turning right on a red light. At the same time, an eight-year-old girl with her father was crossing the intersection. He ran over that eight-year-old girl. She died under the right-left wheel of his F-250 Ford pickup. Now, when the police arrived at the scene, and actually the driver never even noticed what he did. It was only the waving of the father's arms that made him stop, Mr. Speaker. And he stopped. The police arrived, and they tested him under the procedures that this government is talking about, having a legal testing device, but we still don't know if that's going to be approved. They're talking about it. We don't know what it's going to be calibrated to or what the amounts of uh, THCs are going to be. But in this particular case, Mr. Speaker, the THC level was 1.5. Now, that's below Colorado's legal limit of 0.5, uh, 5. But this person was still charged with impaired driving because the specialists that we so lack in this country came to the scene and were able to verify and prove that this young man was impaired by a drug even though he was substantially under the limits set by the law. You know the shocking part about this, Mr. Speaker? Is this young man was 22 years old. He weighs 195 pounds. He's on the varsity football team in the prime of his life, and yet he was so impaired he did not realize he drove over a young girl, and he was one-third, less than one-third of the legal limit. Now just imagine, Mr. Speaker, if that was you and your daughter, and that guy weighed 120 pounds driving that vehicle, where he would be. Because I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, I have appeared in courts in British Columbia and given expert evidence as to the effects of alcohol consumption on an individual. I was a breathalyzer for over 20 years, an operator. And I know how it affects a person and how the dissipation of that person. And the lighter the weight, the greater it is. But I don't want to dwell on that too much, Mr. Speaker. Now let's just take a look. A recent test, one of the most recent studies done in the state of Washington states, the percentage of drivers involved in fatal crashes who have traces of marijuana in their blood has doubled since marijuana was legalized in Washington state. Now that's just recently just came out. Very, very recently, Mr. Speaker. But you know what was kind of, how's my time? 
Getting tight? All right. Thank you. You know what? But what else the researchers found? That 70% of the drivers who failed these sobriety tests and whose impairment was attributed to marijuana by drug recognition experts still had blood levels of THC lower than the phi, which is the level in the state of Washington. So I think I'm running out of time, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> And I apologize for doing a little bit of shock therapy, but you know, I am appalled by the lack of common sense that I see across the floor in people bringing legislation out there when history shows us what's happening. And I don't want to see that happen to my kids, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren, child that was just born. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.